Working more than something to do, Monday at 10. It's a great half hour of fun. We now return to Garbage Pail Flicks, Garbage Pail Flicks, Garbage Pail Flicks, Garbage Pail Flicks, Garbage Pail Flicks. A disc in a task in a flower making basket. Works like magic, smells so nice you'll see it's just fantastic. I'll get you a hot drink, man. Dub, dub, double beef, top with double cheese. Or if you double with regular fries and your soft drinks free. Dub, dub, double beef, top with double cheese. Or if you double with regular fries and your soft drinks free. Buy two White Castle double cheeseburgers. In transmission. If you use pop, are we on the air already? You're not using your brain. I mean, are we still in 2020? Oh, okay. I mean, what month is this? This is Network 23. Whoa, 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 hello. Really? Huh. Fire one up. What time Fire is it? one open. Really? I hope everyone's enjoying as we cruise into July in the midst of the hot, hot summer. This is episode 9 of the GPF Podcast Show. Of course, I am your humble host, Chuck Balzac, a.k.a. the Werewolf of Berlin, six feet under the big top, with treasure troves of retro goodies. So let's get on with the show. After smoking marijuana. Channel 4 News at 6 and 10. It's a change for the better. I must admit that I am somewhat puzzled by the next television features. Evidently, this, uh... Did you see the latest Nintendo newsletter? Whoa, nice graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. It's the Legend of Zelda, and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ganon are pretty bad. Octorox Tech Tech's levers, too. But with your help, our hero pulls through. Yeah, go, Link. Yeah, get some. Awesome. Intense. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Your parents help you hook it up. The Legend of Zelda sold separately. And now back to the new archery. And up next, we'll have the latest on the move to stop places that sell gasoline from also selling cold beer. A move which leaders in at least one community say is a good idea. Some people prefer the taste of Coke, and some people prefer the taste of Pepsi, but some people go out of their way for the taste of RC. Hey, Burn, how's the water? Sure is hot and steamy in here. What's this? The Uncola? Come on, Burn. Don't any news from the real world make it up to your tub? People are picking the taste of Sprite over 7-Up, because only Sprite's got lime in it. Read my lips through the steam, Vern. Lime-mun. Know what I mean? Oh, Vern, I like you, little duck. <laughs> For all your printing needs, all your media, littlemonstersprinting.com. This segment is called The Junk Pile. What's that? Looks like a cross house generator. <laughs> this is a Max, Max Headroom. Max Headroom? Ah, a cocologist. He sees us. Where there's a wave, there's a Coke. I like him. Join the club. Mm -hmm. More people prefer the new taste of Coke over Pepsi. Let's take him home. Good idea. So your Pepsi drinkers, now's your chance. Become a Cocologist. That's the way! Oh. In today's junk pile segment, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. In this segment, usually I go into my abundant VHS collection and pick out three movies to review or talk about. And today I'm going to go back into Something a little different, I've been going online and finding pilots, TV pilots, like lost pilots or episodes that didn't, you know, that only went one episode and then they never made anything of it, or 
something that was short-lived, like a series that only lasted like maybe barely a season or a season, and then it was canceled. Uh, so yeah, so here we go. M -m 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 Max Headroom, 1987, the first computer-generated TV personality. Yeah. Started off in 1985. 20 minutes into the future TV movie that introduced the world to Max Headroom. Actor Matt Feuer, some of you might know, some of you might know him as the one father in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and also a voice actor for Hercules and Disney's Gargoyles, actually had his start. Max Headroom was one of his breakout for clean ice cubes clean ice cubes to ch ch chill the light refreshing taste of a new coke a chilling idea <laughs> elect the light better taste for a brighter better america the time is now the taste is a light new possibilities new coke think about it max hedgen was created by george stone annabelle jankel and rocky morton fun fact if I'm not mistaken, those are also the minds behind the, cre the creation of the Super Mario Brothers movie. As you'll see, some similarities between 20 Minutes Into the Future, the TV movie, and the series that followed. The style of it sort of matches Super Mario Brothers. I mean, look at Max Hedrum's hair, and look at the Koopa King's hair in the Mario film. This is Minimax Headroom's Pop Quiz. And what I want to know is, Swagger, where does the refreshing new phrase, Catch the Wave, come from? Obviously, Cocologists. Blindfold, please. Ha. Quicker next time. In blind taste tests, which pop drink did more people prefer? The new taste of Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi! Wrong. Mm, I love trick questions. No. Coke. The new taste of Coke. It's true. You heard it here first. C catch the Wave. Coke. His Cinemax show had such, such mega guests as Magicians Penn and Teller, Mary Tyler Moore, and a slew of others. So Max Hedrum was up there with Arsenio Hall and Leno, dude. M -m 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 Max Hedrum. I mean Max. M -m 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 Max Hedrum. I mean Max Hedrum blew up, kids. He was everywhere. T-shirts, buttons, everywhere you turned on the TV, there he was, doing his own talk show, spots for MTV, this was the Pepsi MTV generation, so he was just like a spokesperson it seemed like, but he started off with a TV series and a talk show, talk show was, the talk show was on Cinemax for about one season. There appeared in the east a mighty star which shone bright upon the earth. And when the people saw the star, they were in awe. And tonight, we're proud to bring you that same star as we present Max Hedrum's giant Christmas turkey. With people from all nations. Dave Edmonds, the Southwark Cathedral Choir, Bob Geldof, Robin Williams, and Tina Turner. Merry Christmas! Plus, of course, Max, I did Christmas my way, Hedrum. Hi, Max, 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 Max Hedrum here. Max Hedrum was to be described as an icon or an IP. Bigger than the president in the box, a TV video screen. I'm smart for my own smarts. But now that I'm older, I actually get Max Hedrum. The idea of Max Hedrum outside of MTV and Coke was he actually... A spoof of himself? Did he sell out, or did corporate sell out to Max Hedrum? Did Max Hedrum sell out, or did become too big that even Max Hedrum, by the government, the corporation, couldn't sell enough Coke products? They put him his head in the box, and they wanted to quiet him. They wanted to shut him up. And put him in the box. That's where he gets his stuttering problem. Hi. <laughs> How long have we known each other? Oh, we go way back. 
You know, we've never sung a song together. You know, that's true. Maybe better put that right. Not time like the present, big fella. You know this one? Are you kidding? Grab a line. Try to hang on. You sure love that new Coke. And then on the night of November 22nd, 1987, at about 9 p.m., right here in Chicago, I was about seven years old at the time, watching the news with my mom, Channel 9 News, and there's a, a break in, like a scramble, on the broadcast of the news, and Max Hedrum, this guy in a Max Hedrum Halloween mask. is spouting off curse words and having someone off screen spank him with a fly swatter before the station went back to the news at 9 on channel 9. When I witnessed this as a kid kind of fractured my mind a little bit. The next day I found out that it was a disgruntled employee he used to work at one of the stations, figured out a way how to hijack one of the signals, and had a little bit of fun, I guess. A protest of sorts, dressed as Max Hedrum. I think Max Hedrum faded away after that. And they never caught the pirate who hijacked the Chicago airwaves that November night. Welcome to Dynatron City, proud symbol of the atomic age. Wait, something has gone wrong. Mutants are taking over the metropolis. Who can stop these terrifying creatures? Yahoo! Only a new breed of superhero with superpowers I'm charged. can save our world. You lift your head. Glad you mentioned it. Watch the Defenders of Dynatron City, Saturday, February 22nd on Fox. The Defenders of Dynatron City, 1992, from Lucasfilms and JVC, put out this video game straight to the Nintendo Entertainment System. There was a aired pilot on Fox Kids Cartoon Block, and sadly and unfortunately, we were only graced with one episode before it was axed. The Mystic Citizens of Dynatron City, a group of delivery people who get caught in a radioactive machine created by the mad scientist Mayhem who only wants to conquer Dynatron City for his own enjoyment and pleasure. This radioactive atomic machine turns the mild-mannered group into cartoonishly mutated superheroes led by the fearless monkey kid buzzsaw girl jet headstrong toolbox atom ed miss megawatt and of course the floating head it's kind of similar to say like the tick or Mystery Men would be a good comparison to what Dynatron City would have been. A group of misfit superheroes form a team and try to take down the evil baddie who's trying to destroy their city. They had big plans for Dynatron City, so much that there was ad typing it, and they were going to continue the series, it looked like, at the end of the... After the first episode, Mayhem is laughing and saying, I'll get you. You just wait, Dynatron City. Dr. Mayhem is coming back. Superheroes, I'll get you, shaking fist. And it ended, so it was like, okay, to be continued. Nope, nothing. Just got canceled. 
They even had an awesome voice cast, with voice talents and actors such as Tim Curry, Whoopi Goldberg, and Charlie Adler. Oh, and even the forgettable David Coburn, who you remember as the pedestrian number one in the GTA San Andreas game. Yeah, me neither. Now that's my kind of sellout! Hey, I think that's a swell idea! And to take it up to another level, Defenders of Dinatron City had a six-issue Marvel comic book, which you can find right now for about $30 a piece. If you'd like to know more about Dinatron City and its pilot episode, please visit youtube.com and check out the pilot episode unless you of course want to spend $300 on a VHS copy. Do yourself a favor and check it out! There are two kinds of people in this world. Those who believe and those who will. When the world isn't the same as our minds believe. He's here, I can tell, I can feel it. Then we are in a nightmare. You found me, didn't you? What in the world's happening? Eric! And nothing is worse than a nightmare. I know you don't believe this. One of mine, aren't you? I don't know what to believe. My daddy taught me. You can stand up to anything if you got the guts to look it in the eye. You come to kill me. Lock the door if you can look it in the eye. Let many survive. This maniac or this animal, whatever it is. Oh, God. If you can look at the eye. Worry to death every night. No, don't open the door. Two more kids were killed last night. Yes, it's already begun. Werewolf. Tonight, we hunt. Werewolf, 1987. Werewolf. Cancelled after only barely 30 episodes. Made to 29 episodes, so like one season. Eric Cord was just an ordinary college student. Until he fell under the curse of the werewolf. The nightmares continue. Worse than I ever remember any nightmare as a child. You can end the curse by severing the original bloodline. It's like watching a horror movie taking place in the room with me. The terror strikes Saturday nights. Werewolf. Only on Fox. A lost relic of television history from Fox. Way back in 1987 when someone at Fox Television thought, Why not air a TV drama about a werewolf? Hence the title, Werewolf. Yep, before Twilight and after the Michael J. Teen Wolf, there was Eric Cord. Young Eric has been bitten by a werewolf. However, he's not particularly thrilled by this turn of affairs and wishes to escape the curse. Brought to you in part by Honda Scooters and California Coolers. Because nothing goes better with a werewolf TV series than scooters and wine coolers. We open up with the werewolf logo in red over a black screen fades. As we see silver bullets and a narration. Old timer talking about how he doesn't believe in fairy tales and... Blah, 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 blah. You're gonna learn today, Tex Bunghole, because the title of this TV series is Werewolf. Flash, we're in an 80s nightclub. Neon fogs. Neons and fog lights and yuppies trying to get laid. And we see a couple leaving. Almost reminds me of Lost Boys, the beginning of Lost Boys. And as the couple leaves to their convertible red top, Something attacks the top of their car, screams, and then we flash forward to our protagonist and his blonde girlfriend in a swimming pool. An older gentleman who allegedly is the father of the girl, 80s style yuppie, in his three-piece suit telling them to be careful because there was an attack last night and kids got killed. Flash! Eric is cruising in a convertible. Apparently, everybody has convertibles in this town. There are always one regular car and one convertible. It must be California. And just a side note, um, this is really, literally, the Tim Buck 3 song that's playing during this montage scene. The first, but not the last, montage in this show. 
or just Convertible Town, USA. So Eric's heading home, and someone's blocking his space, and he loses his shit, starts yelling for this guy named Ted. He goes inside, and there's like this really dramatic, drawn-out, drag-out fucking scene of him going through the house, finding his roommate sitting in the corner of the room with a shotgun, babbling about how he needs to kill him because he's a werewolf. But this was this is summarizing it because it takes him about 15 minutes to tell him this. Ted explains the instance when he was attacked and became were-Ted. And this drags on and on and on. Describes the pentagram on his hand and what it means. And the only other way, he says, that to kill, either kill him with a silver bullet, which Eric won't do because it's his roommate and his friend, or to find the original werewolf and take him out. We'll break the, break the bloodline and the curse. So Eric stays up with him all night because he doesn't believe him. And as I guess in the middle of the night he changes, does a transformation. Eric gets bit in the process, shoots his friend. What I don't understand is if his roommate is living with him all this time, and he has a dog, like a wolf looking dog, and this dude transforms and kills at night, how does he not attack his own roommate and his dog? And that's even brought up. And even though it's brought up, it's still kind of like vague. So it doesn't look too good that he shot his friend, his roommate. No one believed his roommate that he was a werewolf. And now no one's going to believe Eric that he's a werewolf now. The only thing saving this so far for at least the pilot episode, first episode's like an hour, is the transformation of the werewolf, which, upon further investigation, was done by Rick Baker, so the effects were decent, at least for the first episode of the pilot. I'm not sure how the rest of the series goes, the other 28 episodes. Maybe the only thing I would really be interested in this series would be to find out that if he actually killed the original werewolf, who is played by Chuck Connors, that is like a psychopathic, one-eyed werewolf, evil werewolf. The pacing of this story sucks. So many unnecessary montages, it almost feels like it was in a commercial. Like all these things that they were brought to you by, and like, there was all these promotions for it. And it's like, it almost feels like it's almost like a commercial in some parts. But I keep remembering that it's a werewolf series or TV show and Eric just pining over the fact that he's cursed and the fact that he needs to find the original werewolf to kill him and end his curse and pining over it and bitching about it and over, over the synthesizing sounds that are straight out of like 90210 they might have swapped like this was before 90210 they probably took the soundtrack to this since it was a failed pilot and just put the whole soundtrack to 90210 like, oh, we still got this werewolf soundtrack. Let's use it again. High school drama? Awesome. Throw it in there. And apparently somehow they had these, like, bumpers or, like, these things before the commercial break where it was, like, werewolf facts. And they would have, like, real people that would, like, that studied, like, authority and, like, and these doctors that would tell things about werewolves in, like, such a serious, like, almost, um... America's most wanted type of like scenery a guy in an office talking about werewolves Dr. Stephen Kaplan noted lycanthropist there are reports in both the uh, San Francisco the Bay Area and the Great Lakes area and other areas of uh, female werewolves who are quite active even today just outrageous I love werewolf tales but this 1987 werewolf TV series just missed the mark. Don't miss the spring IKC dog show on Sunday, April 2nd at McCormick Place North. Tomorrow on Fox, don't miss a special two-hour episode of 21 Jump Street. All this week, Arsenio Hall hosts The Late Show, and Monday, his friend Eddie Murphy drops in. And there's more great entertainment coming your way this summer. In a moment, a special sneak preview of the exciting new shows coming to Fox on Saturday nights.
so carefully avoid. I can't imagine who would want to watch Harry Monsters except maybe you. Oh, no. Oh, no. You know, some things in life are as inevitable as the tide. I always thought there really wasn't anything I could do about my hair loss. Hello, this is Al. Love that pooper. Pooper. That's the sound I make when I cough up a fur ball. Ha! Shut up, Al, or we'll turn you into a winter coat for a Mexican hairless. Next is that lovable house. The Flicks List! The Flicks List! Today's Flicks List is brought to you by... On the flicks list today, we have Bones Branch Bootlegs. Recently, I ordered a cartoon relic of a VHS tape from Bones Branch Bootlegs. Gravedale High, 1990, starring Rick Moranis, and his first cartoon, his only cartoon, that he did back in 1990. Yep. Oh, the Rick Moranis, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Ghostbusters, Little Shop of Horrors, Rick Moranis. Had a cartoon in 1990-91 on NBC for its last Saturday morning lineup ever. Only ran one season and an entertaining 13 episodes where Moranis was a school teacher, and why not, to a school of monsters such as Frankenstein, named Frankentyke, a surfer dude bro named Creature from the Black Lagoon, Named Gil, a greaser vampire, Vinny Stoker, a werewolf nerd, an invisible kid who aspired to be a stand-up comic to round out this wacky but fun retro cartoon. Beware, it's the Gravedale High Happy Meal featuring four creepy characters who put the ghoul in school. And there's a different one each week. You can collect all four when you buy the Gravedale High Happy Meal only at McDonald's. As they do school activities and sports high school type of stuff, unaware that they're freaking out the normies in their time because they're all monsters. Gravedale High is a cartoon lost long ago, so I say gracias! And thank you to Bones Branch Bootlegs for reuniting me with this gem of a VHS series that's probably lost and you can't find it anywhere out there. They offer VHS and tapes in a variety of colors, custom made. Make your way over to Bones Branch Bootlegs. Link in the description. Now I'm gonna go watch this and get blazed out of my skull. He's fine. Let the fiesta begin. I will return after these messages. Aye, 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 aye. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, oh, Win a remote control sports car in Pepsi's drive away sweeps no Visit taste. the Pepsi displays at the Pepsi Grocers to enter. Absolutely. Diet Pepsi. I have no idea. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. <laughs> Introducing Nickelodeon. And I found this in the trash. If you don't want it, the segment is called. Hey man, I found this in the trash. trash if, if you don't want this, I'll keep it, man. It's not trash to me, man! You can't do that on television. 1979, 80. This is an almost lost piece of Americana. Straight out of Canada! This is Nickelodeon. Stay tuned for You Can't Do That on Television. But first, this. You Can't Do That on Television was an early, might even been the first Nickelodeon show in the days when Nickelodeon was first hitting the cable airwaves in the 1980s. This show ran about 10 years, from about 80 to 90. Welcome to... Uh, hi, hi, 
Hi, and welcome to You Can't Do Lantern Television. Hi, and welcome to a very exciting and highly amusing episode of You Can't Do That on Television. Of course, it was a Canadian-based sketch comedy show targeted at kids. This was the original of Gangsters, and the first to use green slime, and buy the buckets of green slime. I don't know. Over the 10 year span, kids on the cast included the never forgettable Christine Moose, Alistair, Doug, and of course Alanis Morissette. This was Canadian bacon, yo. This week on You Can't Do That on Television, Moose and the Gang look at medicine, rules and regulations, and the world of the future. Watch You Can't Do That on Television, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. And again at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. You Can't Do That on Television? Only on Nickelodeon. The whole show was directed or overseen by two adults, and the rest of the cast was kids. One of the adults, actor Les Lye. This legendary Canadian treasure portrayed such favorite characters as Ross the producer, who would chastise and degrade and belittle the kids. Almost like he was forcing them to do the show. Barth's Diner, where Barth, Barth's Burgers would make the kids puke and nearly poison them every episode. What do you think in the burgers? I heard that. Eddie Haygard, who would mostly portray the mother or teacher of the show or any skits they were doing. It was like SNL or Mickey Mouse Club for kids, Nickelodeon style. Some of the other popular bits included the popping out of the lockers and calling for another kid. That kid pops out of the locker and there's an irrelevant question asked. Then it's answered. This bit would segue into something like introduction to the opposites. These skits would be where the kids in the situations where everything was opposite. So if it was viewed as good, like, oh, pizza, yum, it would be like, ew, pizza, I want... I want caviar. It was great fun. I said it before, I'll say it again. It was a different time. <laughs> uh, I heard that. Some of the episodes included titles such as Sexual Equality, Strike Now, Addictions, Popularity, Bullying, Divorce, and even Adoption, which was actually a banned episode. They took it off the air. Which is kind of ironic considering that some of their most popular sketches included a dungeon where a kid was actually chained up in a dungeon. Die. And of course the firing squad where an ongoing joke was the kid would trick the dictator into saying fire and they would shoot him instead of the kid every time. This was uh, this was like every episode. Ready? Aim. Wait, wait, wait! Stop the execution. What is it this time? Ready? Aim. Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Stop the execution. What is it this time? Fire! No! 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 no. Fire! Okay. <laughs> This is likely why it was never released on any format. Is the only reason besides licensing that I can think of why it was never released. So you won't find it on DVD or streaming. It just baffles me that I can't find this show. But I did find a awesome retrospective documentary titled You Can't Do That on Film, which is streaming and never released on any format. I do have a VHS of about six episodes, all randomly compiled onto this VHS that someone had made me. I don't even know where they found the episodes. They probably had them and did a dub of a dub of a dub. But this tape only has relatives, 
Enemies and Paranoia, Fairy Tales, and Smells, and I think one other one. Enemies and Paranoia one is a classic. Whatever you kids do, I don't want you to let those Russians in on any of the secrets of our show. <laughs> what secrets are you talking about? Where the kids all think that they're going to be attacked by Russia. Thanks to the producer Ross's paranoia. Secrets that the Russians might want to know, like uh, what our green slime is made of. Well, Ross, they couldn't find that out for me. I mean, I don't know what green slime's made of myself. Adam, you are a dim bulb. And a fun flicks fact. Fred Rogers, yep, Mr. Rogers, was offended by this show. I'll tell you what offended me is Lady Elaine. Just creepy. Measure, huh? Stop the green slime from falling. Well, now, wait a minute. If they can stop green slime, then we ought to welcome them with open arms. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, you are, you are a fifth columnist. You are a dirty... Pinko, Kami, Red. Ross, do I look red? Oh, you. sorry, green. Such a classic show in every aspect. Just don't say water or you don't know. I know. That'll you get you. Like water. I don't know. I don't know, it being July, you know, summer, just kind of takes you back and this show makes you think of summer. I don't know about you, but... These are only at Arby's. Taste the Arby's difference. Hey, did you say nuts and honey? That's a tempting part of this new touch of breakfast. Ask someone just out of curiosity what type of music they're into or enjoy to listen to. To have the generic basic response of eh, everything, you know, a little of everything. Really? Finally, someone else in this world who loves vaporwave just as much as I do. <laughs> Oh, man! The genre really changed, though, so much when Vectroid came on the scene. Am I right? Look at the size of these tracks. The legendary dinosaur that lived on sun-kissed fun foods. We're getting close. I can smell it. In outer space comes a group of freaky fellows freaky. Bringing freaky brand cereal to kids on Earth It's full of brightly colored marshmallows The freakies have little ships for the long trip To fly into your breakfast bowl Milk With the honey taste and crunch This marshmallow bunch Makes breakfast fun their only goal Freakies are delicious In this breakfast that's nutritious Crunchy spaceships are new 
Well, I certainly found all those silly creatures interesting. Didn't you? I must say, I am disappointed that there was not a lot of practical information on... Hello. Gotham Corner Store? Yes, we seem to be down to our last diet cook. A gentleman is on his way to pick some up. Just look for a black car. No, this black car will be rather difficult to miss. And by the way, the gentleman is usually in quite a rush. Just for the taste of it, Diet Coke! Ah. Massive, sleek, super technology, and it's been stolen. Who's got the guts to steal Batman's ultimate weapon? This reporter suspects it might be you, you, you. Steal the Batmobile. Watch MTV all day this Sunday for the MTV Bat Signal. Then call the special 900 number on your screen. One of you is going to walk away a winner. That's right, a Batmobile. Now, we've removed the engine so you don't go driving around and bust your butt, but it's still one amazing collector's item. And moi will deliver it personally to your door along with a check for 25 thousand dollars it's the perfect her contest i want you to tell all your friends so go ahead steal the batmobile mtv's your accomplice of course i wouldn't want the batman mad at me ah! but that's your affair anyway if you've got the cojones we've got the car mtv steal the batmobile watch june 18th to win now it's time once again venture into the tape yard The VHS tape yard. Let's dig up some tape, shall we? So, you want to join the Feebles? Oh, rather. Meet the Feebles! Meet the Feebles! Meet the Feebles. The movie that began as family entertainment. But went horribly wrong. Have you got any smack? Smack? The show the authorities tried to stop. Oh, what beautiful white fur. God, my dear. <laughs> the story that rocked the puppet world. This is a family show, for Christ's sake. Sex. I'm hot, Bletch, but not the way you think. Drugs. <laughs> Animal husbandry. Why did you bring it here? It's not mine. You know it's not. We'll let the court decide that, shall we? And the garden, garden of love. Meet the Feebles turns the cabbage patch into the killing fields. It's contagious. It's the big one, Harry. No, it can't be. I've taken precautions. Corruption. Barry, do me a line. Lust. Feeling shy. Are you blessed? Light Romance From the director of Bad Taste Yippee! Did you realize you were sitting on its face? Well, I felt a bit uncomfortable, but I thought it was my hemorrhoid Please, God, I know I've been a <coughs> bad bunny but if you Nothing make me well again, is I'm sacred Meet the feebles! The Phoenix is about to be released on you. Have you ever noticed the beautiful lighting in this? Entertainment history. Put your hands together for the fabulous Feebles Variety Hour. Directed by the beloved Peter Jackson. Yes, guys, let me tell you. 
Before Mr. Jackson, the Hobbit Wrangler, was making Lord of the Rings flicks, he was doing what most indie directors do starting out. He made a few disgusting, vile, fucked up little independent horror films. Three to be exact, Dead Alive, Bad Taste, and this gem, Meet the Feebles. Which I can simply summarize as Muppets on Crack. You can't unsee this. With more than 40 or 50 puppets in this film, it's hard to keep track, but I'll try here. You have a junkie frog. For the longest time, I thought the frog was like an alligator or a crocodile or some kind of amphibian or reptile. I had no idea it was a frog until, like, he's always sweating the rat. This dirty rat, like this French rat. He's always sweating him for, like, a fix. Because he's a junkie. <laughs> and, uh... Then he got Sid, the elephant, who has some Jerry Springer drama going on in his life. He has a girlfriend that's a chicken, and they have a mutant chicken half elephant child together. And we'll just leave it at that. Here in court, it will be held over until the 25th, at which time you'll be compelled to provide a blood sample. Oh, God, Sandy, why did you bring it here? It's not mine, you know it's not. We'll let the court decide that, shall we? <laughs> Hippo gangster walrus and bear-ass hippotits. Yep. This is likely the most fucked up movie you'll ever sit through. Excuse me, Mr. Bleach, sir, if I could have a minute of your time, I've been waiting to see you all day. I've got a smashing little routine I think will go down a tree. So, you want to join the Feebles? Oh, rather. Okay, son, I'll give you one minute. Impress me. Uh, <clears throat> it's one of my own compositions. It's called... Glad to be a guppy. Hmm. I'm a fishy little fellow with a scaly sort of skin and a frolic in the shallows where the tide is coming in. Is something the matter, Mr. Bleach? I think I've got a cavity in a rear molar. Would you mind having a look for me? Oh, certainly. Mm, it's right at the back. Oh, it's all done here. Went down a treat, all right. This is open up with the Feebles Variety Show. The opening is very Muppet esque. They're all singing about the Variety Show, and the announcer is a cute bunny who introduces uh, a Miss Piggy esque uh, hippo named Heidi that is uh, singing here, and this French rat insults the hippo. And the whole show stops dead, stops dead, with a fat joke. And Heidi storms off the stage to the office of the manager, Big Bletch, the walrus gangster, who is banging a cat. Yeah, five minutes into a big spoiler, there's puppets having sex. A walrus and a cat. <laughs> you can never unsee this. Side story. Little hedgehog named Robert. Robert. Hello. Robert. My name's Robert. Ah. Shows up to the Feebles Theater looking to make his big break into show business. <clears throat> Excuse me. His big break into show business. And he's greeted at the door by a nasty horsefly telling him that he gets to do unforgivable things to be famous. Until an old worm comes out and leads Robert into the theater to meet the rest of the crew and cast of the Feebles Variety Hour. A variety show. Might have been longer than an hour. Cause this movie sure is. Oh, your eyes, Sid. Fast forward, we are at a piano where a Rastafarian animal of some kind is playing the piano as poodles sing along on top of the piano. This is where Robert falls in love with the little poodle Lucille. Falls in love. And we have our love story. And all this chaos. <laughs> oh, what the... My apologies, oh. Sunday. I had a bone stuck in my throat. 
my game, I think. Some of my favorite scenes include Bletch, the walrus, and his gang, who includes Bulldog Barry, and a warthog named Cedric, doing normal shit in public. But they're like half puppet, half men, playing golf, driving cars, exercising. It's very amusing to see. And the music isn't terrible throughout the whole movie. Although this movie is shocking in some scenes, if you can get past rabbits fucking, literally, rabbits puppets fucking. In a flashback scene, where the frog is talking about Vietnam, and you see all these dead puppets, and, and it's a war between beavers and gators, but set in Vietnam. I saw the worst of it, kid. Yeah, the fuckery just doesn't stop in this movie. I mean, from puppets getting AIDS to a disturbing fly literally eating shit out of a toilet as he talks to the rabbit. It's just outstanding, and this movie does have outstanding puppetry going on. And you'll never forget it. It'll stick in your mind and fester and just... It's just that kind of movie. It just sits with you. <coughs> Sorry. The touch of the two me. And the end sequence, the puppet shootout, is a cinematic shootout that only rivals Scarface, cockroach. You gotta take the good with the bad, and if you're gonna watch this, follow it up with something from the Muppets. Muppets Take Manhattan, Muppet Movie. You know, either watch this first, or watch it after. You know, that way you're kinda balancing it out. Oh, bad luck, old chip. And go back and watch Dead Alive and Bad Taste. Because those movies are awesome as well in their own right. Meet the Feebles, it's out there. Find it and experience it. Have you got any smack? Smack? Horse, liquid sky, skag, snow, coke, crack, methadone, benzodrine, pinky, sand pad. Morning glory, nutmeg, blue minis, aspirin, ADOS, paracetamol, Vex vapor rub. Oh, oh. You don't happen to be an asthmatic by any chance. Could I borrow your offer? I don't take drugs of any sort. Being cool, you'll find. Hi, guys. Nice lips. Refreshing <laughs> attitude. Come on, short duds. Get hot. Cool is all you got. Doing it country cool. you've enjoyed spending these few moments in Fraggle Rock, I am certain that you came to learn that the Fraggle is a most noble creature. There are many ways to describe Fraggles, but I, for one, notice above all else the profound and wonderful dignity of the Fraggles. Whoa! Well, it's going to about do it for this episode. Thank yous for tuning in and tuning out with us at the GPF Podcast Show. We hope you continue to enjoy this transmission brought to you by the Apocalypse. Please hit up all of our social medias and like and follow and subscribe and all that good stuff. We can be found on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Until next time. Take us out, Max. Just good pals. Transmission. That's Ain't right. Got no time for gals. You're the one I rely on, like right guard under nylon. We laugh, we have fun. We sure do. We're, We're like, like the double barrel of a gun. We go together like days and nights, like legs in the same paradise. <laughs>
You enjoying this? Since I don't know when. Carry on. Oh, try and stop me. We're just good pals. That's no nice. time for Susie or Sal. We're a couple of mad shows. Far too butch to watch chat shows. Well, football, that's okay. We share a beer, that's our way. Did you know you're my oldest mate? Ah, you old reprobate. Say that again. I've seen your style. It sticks out a mile. We sit on a couple of stools, pal, but we ain't a couple of tools, pal. I love you in blue. That's it. Like I bought you for that cruise. Remember that night on B deck when you wore my lemon V neck. But we're butch, we're straight. We go to bed about eight and sleep in separate rooms. That's right, and we don't see each other all night. I like your style, it sticks out a mile. A mile. We, we sit on a couple of stools, pal, but we ain't a couple of tools, pal. <laughs> One more? You lead. Tag along. I'm with you. We share a flat, you set. I steal the duvet off your bed. I'll do anything he asks, but I won't wear studded leather. Or mass, I could talk to you for a now. Me too. I love, I love to hear you sing in the shower. I, I might give you a couple of friendly slaps, but we're just normal chaps. chaps. Well, we are. Don't slink around in silk wraps. Uh -huh. Don't share our shower caps. Mm -mm. Don't pose for no weirdo snaps. Well, that's right. Or sit on each other's laps. <laughs> no, sir. Yes, we're just good pals. That's right. The Summer of Batman. Never forget. I'm only here to suggest stuff. There's only so much I can do. This movie is just sinful. Just sinful. <laughs> this is going to be forever unsee. I just you can't unsee it. Once you see this, you're you're you're. That's it. Just can't can't get can't get rid of it. Took over, like a pirate. Hashtag physical media forever. This actually means quite a bit to me, and I'll tell you why for many reasons. Physical media is dead to the majority, but for those like me, I say physical media is not dead and should be preserved and treated as so. Many of you out there have probably realized that you know you're going through your favorite streaming service and you're looking at your you know different streaming uh, devices and you can't find something. And you're wondering why? Why why isn't it on there? Well, why why doesn't you know certain things come up on certain streaming devices? Just obvious movies or TV shows and they they're just not there. There is so much media out there that's lost or has never been released, rare out of print. This means a copy of Pee-wee's Big Adventure could be nearly impossible to find someday on a DVD or VHS. If your trusty streaming service doesn't offer or have this, the precious rights to this film, you're not going to see Pee-wee and his big adventures. Unless you already have a copy on DVD or VHS. It goes pretty deep, folks. TV shows that have never been released. For example, The Muppet Show. Millions, millions of archival footage or films that have never been put on DVD or even Blu-ray. Physical media is not dead. Physical media forever. Some of these films on DVD or VHS right now are skyrocketing. One VHS copy of something from 19... 
85 you could be paying $50 and up for a VHS now. And your streaming service may take down the movie that you want to see next month. This is why physical media forever. Visit your local shops and stores that sell media, bookstores. There's a lot of little bookstores out there that you can support by buying some physical media, just like books, folks. Especially now, support those little businesses, record stores, comic book stores. This is why it's still relevant and important. It should be treated as the same as old books or literature. A rare or lost or forgotten piece of music on tape or movie or film on tape was only released on that format. Preserve film. Preserve that media. That medium. I thank you for listening.